All You Need to Know, the Bloomberg Quint podcast that prepares you for the day's business. Good morning and thanks for listening in. This is the All You Need to Know podcast on Bloomberg Quint and I'm Alex Matthew. Here's everything that you need to know before you start planning the weekend. First up, just after the Home Ministry released its revised guidelines to combat the spread of the coronavirus pandemic, India reported nearly 45,000 fresh cases in the 24 hours to 8 a.m. yesterday. The number of active cases, which has been on the wane, once again rose above the 4.5 lakh mark. The total number of cases now stands at 92.6 lakh. Meanwhile, AstraZeneca PLC has said that it is likely to conduct an additional global trial to assess its COVID-19 vaccine after current studies raised questions over its level of protection. The new trial will evaluate a lower dosage that performed better than a full amount in Astra's studies, according to the company's chief executive officer. Watch out later today for India's GDP print for the second quarter. The country is set to enter a technical recession with the economy set to contract for a second consecutive quarter. But the pace of contraction is likely to be significantly below what was seen in the first quarter. The contraction is seen at 8.2% in the second quarter, according to the median estimates of 30 economists polled by Bloomberg. This would be India's fourth recession since independence and the first since liberalization, according to Crystal. In the top news back home, the Bombay High Court has denied interim relief to the shareholders of Lakshmi Vilas Bank, who had sought to stay the merger with the Indian subsidiary of Singapore's DBS Bank. The scheme of amalgamation announced by the Reserve Bank of India, remember, comes into effect today. The promoters had challenged the scheme on various grounds, including cancellation of its existing shares in the bank. India Bulls Housing Finance has also challenged certain aspects of the scheme floated by the central bank. The High Court will later pass a detailed order giving reasons for rejecting the interim relief. Speaking of the central bank, RBI Governor Shaktikanta Das said yesterday in a speech that India will continue to approach capital account convertibility as a process rather than an event. He said that the capital account is convertible to a great extent at present and went on to say that FPI investments in Indian debt markets had been expanded within calibrated macroprudential norms. Moving on, a one-time restructuring of loans may not necessarily help all real estate developers as very few of them will be able to meet the criteria that has been laid down for it. That's according to HDFC's Vice Chairman and Managing Director Keki Mistri. Developers seeking to benefit from the one-time restructuring of loans have two challenges, according to Mistri. One of them is getting an investment-grade credit rating and the other is fulfilling the requisite financial ratios. The Bitcoin plunged on Thursday in a sell-off that saw other digital assets fall more than 20%. That's a slide that's likely to stoke speculation about the durability of the latest boom in cryptocurrencies. Bitcoin, which is the largest token, fell as much as 14% in Thursday trading, heading for one of its worst days since the pandemic spurred liquidation in March. The route began just hours after Bitcoin rose to within $7 of its record high of $19,511, the culmination of a more than 250% surge in the past nine months. Oil prices have also corrected after rising to an eight-month high on concerns that a surge in global coronavirus cases could hurt near-term demand. The news of a vaccine had spurred expectations of a quick recovery and a quick return to normalcy, but now that seems to be getting tempered somewhat. In international markets, U.S. stock markets were shut for the Thanksgiving holiday. In Asia, the markets that have started are cautious at the end of the week. The Nikkei was positive by 0.4%, the Kospi was flat, and the Australian benchmark was lower by about a third of a percent. And with that, it's over to Hormuz Fatakia for the trade setup for the day in India. Good morning, Hormuz. How are we looking this Friday morning? 
Good morning to you, Alex, and to those tuning in as well. The November FNO series was the second best for the Indian markets in 2020. Both Nifty and the Sensex gained over 11%, but it was the Nifty Bank that stole the show, gaining over 23% for the series. In fact, the Nifty Bank is on course for its best monthly performance since January 2012. Some specific stocks that you should keep on your radar today. Gillette has received an order from the National Anti-Profiteering Authority alleging that the company has made a profit of over 57 crore rupees from the lower GST rates. It has asked the company to deposit the said amount with interest in the Consumer Welfare Fund. The company says that it had passed on the net benefit of the reduced rates to customers and has not profiteered from it. A couple of news bits from Mahindra and Mahindra. It has acquired 2.76% stake in TVS Automobile Solutions by subscribing to Series 4 Compulsorily Convertible Preference Shares or CCPS worth 35 crore rupees. In a separate transaction, the company's wholly owned subsidiary Mahindra Holdings has agreed to sell its entire stake in Mahindra First Choice Services and Auto Digitech to TVS Automobile Solutions. Both the stakes were sold for a sum of 21.5 crore rupees and 13.5 crore rupees respectively. AU Small Finance Bank has made a strategic investment of 7.5 crore rupees in the National Payments Council of India by acquiring 0.44% stake at 1,256 rupees a share. Tube Investments, which now has a controlling stake in CG Power, will be in focus after the Small Cap World Fund acquired 1.26% stake in the company at 841 rupees a share. Ramkrishna Forgings has begun commercial production of its hollow spindle line, which will enhance the production capacity of the company by 10,200 tons per annum. Metal stocks were on a roll on Thursday. Both Tata Steel and JSW Steel ended at a two-year high. Tata Steel gained over 5%, while JSW Steel ended 7% higher. Some other buzzing stocks from Thursday's session. Hell, there was a time when Dixon Technologies was priced at 3,000 rupees a share. That was in March this year. On Thursday, the stock gained over 4.5% to end at 11,377 rupees a share. That is a near four time jump from its 52 week low. The stock has gained for the fifth straight day. Sheila Foam was the other stock that saw strong traction on Thursday. The stock ended at a two-month high with gains of over 9.5%. It also rose for the third straight day. And ITDC or Indian Tourism Development Corporation which ended nearly 14% higher on Thursday at its highest level since February this year. Since today is the first day of a new series, no stocks will be in the FNO ban. But in terms of positions, the 13,500 call expiring on the 3rd of December continues to command the highest open interest at 25 lakh shares, followed by the 13,000 call with 20 lakh shares. Early ticks on the SGX Nifty showed that the index was flat around the mark of 13,050. That's all from me this week. We have a long weekend ahead of us, so have a great holiday. But more importantly, stay safe. With that, it's back to you, Alex. Thanks, Hormuz. That's all we have for you on this podcast. But do check in with us over the course of today for all the latest updates in the markets, the economy, and in the world of business. This is Alex Matthews signing off. Have a great Friday and an even better weekend. I hope you enjoyed listening to All You Need to Know. Did you know that you can listen to this show on the IVM Podcast app? On the IVM Podcast app, along with this, we have a number of other shows which you think you'll enjoy. Listen to Cyrus Says with Cyrus Brocha as the host. Listen to Pesa Vesa with Anupam Gupta. The Scene and the Unseen with Amit Varma or Shunya One hosted by Shiladiti Mukhopadhyay and myself. Check out the IVM Podcast app to get more talk content that you will enjoy.